and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about a concept that collectively or a kind of a generalized term that I'll use a lot in my videos is molar mass. Um, when we talk about the mass of one mole of a substance, you know, unfortunately it gets caught up in a lot of terminology. And so to help us clean up some of that terminology, we're first going to talk about representative particles. So if I'm talking about an element, we're talking about an atom is the representative particle. It's the smallest particle of an element that will retain the properties of that. If it's diatomic, such as oxygen or hydrogen, we're going to call it a molecule because there's covalent bonding there. There's electrons shared. Uh, if we have a covalently bonded compound, we'll reference that as a molecule. And an ionic compound is called a formula unit. I was in training once and the instructor said he liked that because it's the one time you can say F you to your teacher and not get in trouble. Because hey, this is chemistry. We're talking about, of course, formula units. So now, since we have all of those representative particles, we find there's a different term to represent the mass of one mole of that particle. So you may see the term atomic mass used. Of course, that's used for elements. And you may see the term uh, molecular mass, and you may see the word weight used as well molecular mass, and that is for our covalent compounds. And we're really referencing covalent compounds that exist as distinct and separate molecules, such as water is two hydrogens and one oxygen, as opposed to diamond, which is carbon after carbon after carbon after carbon after carbon and so forth. Okay, and then we, you might see the term formula mass, formula mass, and that's for your ionic compounds. I lean towards simply using molar mass. And I'll put an mm. So if you're in one of my classes, you'll see an mm for molar mass. That is not a universal symbol. It is my way of trying to distinguish that from molarity, another measurement uh, or value that has a capital M. So I'll put two m's for molar mass and hopefully that will kind of clarify um, that. Now, Let's take a look at how we determine what that molar mass is. For a molar mass, we get this right from the periodic table. So for example, we have calcium phosphate. So we want to find the formula mass. Well, you have to be able to write the formula of calcium phosphate before you can get its formula mass or molar mass. So I have three calciums. Uh, if you look at the periodic table, there's three calciums, and each calcium contributes 40.08 grams for every mole. Now this two distributes, that tells me I have two phosphorus, and if you look at the periodic table, each phosphorus will contribute 30.9 seven, that's, sorry, that's a seven, let me erase that so you can see that clear, 30.97 grams per every one mole. And then I have eight, two times four is eight oxygens, and they each contribute 16. So if we add that up, we get 310.18 grams for every one mole, not just grams. You need to put grams per mole, it's okay if you write grams and then mole to the minus one would be a common thing to see there, okay? Um, but you can't just put grams, it's grams per mole. Okay, dichlorine heptaoxide, two chlorines and seven oxygens. 
So I have, that's pretty straightforward. I've got two chlorines. Each chlorine, you look to the periodic table and it's 35.45 grams for every one mole. And then I've got seven oxygens, they're each 16. So the molar mass or molecular mass of this would be 182.90 grams per mole. Now I want you to notice here that I've been taking these to two decimal places. You can take them to further if you want. If you're dealing with multiple choice without a calculator, you can round that to the ones place. But I teach AP and IB and they tend to use things to two decimal places. So that is my practice for those. Okay, now what about a more challenging one? Barium chlorate hexahydrate. Couple of ways to do this. After a while, you'll probably memorize the molar mass of water, and you could just multiply, you know, six, water is six times 18.02 for each water. Um, eventually, you might memorize that. In the meantime, we're gonna take this down to each element. I have one barium at 137.33 grams per mole. Don't forget to distribute this too. I have two chlorines. They're each 35.45. Now this is tricky. I have six oxygens here, but I have another six here. So I actually have a total of 12 oxygens. And then I have six times two, 12 hydrogens at 1.01. .01. And assuming I did my algebra right, it's always good to check, check your teacher's algebra. We are not immune to making silly errors. That's a horrible looking three, isn't it? So 412.35 grams, and I'll do it this way, moles to the minus one, okay? Now we'll be using this a lot as a conversion factor, so you wanna get very, very good at doing these. All right, let's take a look then and see what how we would get it if we had data. That's how you would get the molar mass if you were looking at the periodic table. But often we're getting our molar mass using data. If that's the case, you're going to want to use the formula. So molar mass is equal to the mass, and often you'll see the symbol N for moles, okay? So, uh, if you want to use the guess method, write your givens. I've got 47.4 grams, and I've got 1.185 moles. U is check your units. You need to have grams, not kilograms, and we do, so our units are okay. We want to get our equation. We have our equation up there. We want to substitute into that equation. So molar mass is equal to the 47.4 grams over 1.185 moles. And that is equal to 40.0 grams per mole. And that's of some random compound that we don't know what it is. Okay, a lot of compounds could have 40 grams per moles, for example. Okay, in this next one, this time we have a mass. Another way to do this, if you don't wanna list your givens, if you're allowed to use a highlighter, you can highlight it. So those are our givens, they're highlighted. You still wanna go through the process. So we next want to check our units. Yes, we have grams, not kilograms, so we don't um, need to convert on that. We have our equation up here already, so let's plug in and solve. 256 grams for every 8.26 moles, and that gives us 30.99. And the question tells us that we're talking about an element and that it is not diatomic. So the closest one within experimental error would be phosphorus. 
Okay, hope you got what you needed from that video. Good luck with chemistry.